Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Sophie's Vet School. If you have a lovely pet, you must take care of them. Listen to Sophie the Vet, I'll help you with your friend. Love them, help them learn, it's cool. Come and join in Sophie's Vet School. Hi everyone, I'm Sophie and I'm a vet and as always I always say hello to everyone because lots of you have met me before. So what's happening today? Well, it's going to be the first of our animal love quizzes. How will it work? Well, there'll be 10 questions and I'll ask each question a couple of times through and you can pause the recording to, to give yourself time to think about the answer. At the end, I'll go through all the answers and give you some more super cool tips to help you with your learning all about our amazing animals. If you want to send me your score, you can do. So best of luck and here we go. So question number one, which animal am I describing? I am the largest of the cat family. I can jump over five meters in length. I live in a group called an ambush or streak. So that was question number one. Which animal am I describing? I am the largest of the cat family. I can jump over five meters in length. And I live in a group called an ambush or streak. Let's see if you can get that one. Now, question number two. Here on the screen, we've got a lovely looking guinea pig. But what I want to know is which vitamins do guinea pigs especially need in their diet? Is it vitamin C, vitamin D or vitamin E? So which vitamin do guinea pigs especially need in their diet? Is it vitamin C, vitamin D or vitamin E? Now, can you get this next one? This is question number three. Can you tell me what animal this picture is of? So do you know the animal in the picture? Question number four is a true or false question. Let's get our picture up to go with this. A lovely cow. But what I want to know is, is it true or false? Do cows have four stomachs? So true or false, do cows have four stomachs? Another picture for you. Which animal does this foot come from? So do you know which animal this foot belongs to? Now we're on to question number six. Now, we know that many dogs like to swim, but what I want to know is which of these two dogs do you think would be the best swimmer? Let's put these up. So we have the Newfoundland on the left and the Dachshund on the right. So the Newfoundland and the Dachshund, which do you think out of those two breeds of dog would make the best swimmer. Now 
Now for question number seven, we're going to go a little bit up in size and we're going to look at the polar bear. Look at him here. Now, you can see there the colour of the polar bear's fur, but what I want to know is, what colour is a polar bear's skin? So under that fur there, what colour do you think that polar bear's skin is? Handsome looking polar bear. We move on to question number eight. So I want you to tell me for each of these four animals I'm going to bring up, do you think that they are born with their eyes open or closed? So the first animal is this lovely one here. This is a gorgeous little foal. Do you think foals are born with their eyes open or closed? And another cute little animal here are our kittens or kits. That's a name given to a baby bunny. And I want to know if you think kits are born with their eyes open or closed. Then we move on to one of my favourites. Look at these lovely little piglets. I want to know if piglets are born with eyes open or closed. <laughs> Very sweet. And finally for, for question number eight, look at these gorgeous puppies. Are puppies born with their eyes open or closed? Now, for question number nine, do you remember what animals we just spoke about? We spoke about horses, rabbits, pigs, and dogs. Now, three out of those four animals have three eyelids per eye. Us humans only have two. One, two. But some animals have three. One, two, and a third one that comes up from the corner of their eye and goes across their eye. So I want to know, Three out of four of those animals have three eyelids per eye. So do you think it's horse, pig, dog, rabbit? Which three out of those four? And finally is question number 10. Look at this picture. These fish are from the Disney film Finding Nemo, but do you know what type of fish they are? So these fish are from the Disney film Finding Nemo, but do you know what type of fish they are? Now, you might want to pause it for a minute while you think about your answers because I'm going to move into the answers now and tell you what they are. So question number one, I described an animal. I said that he was the largest or she was the largest of the cat family, can jump over five metres in length and can live in a group called an ambush or a streak. And that, of course, was our tiger. Look at this big tiger. Can you see his huge teeth? Actually, something very interesting. Tiger cubs are born without any teeth. And as they get older, they grow those huge teeth. And another interesting fact about tigers, look at this lovely tiger. Stretching out, having a sleep. And what you can see in that picture are the pads on his feet, so his paw pads. And they use these paw pads to lose heat, to sweat from. So when it's very hot, like it's been recently, they will actually sweat through those paw pads. And this is why also tigers often hunt at night when it's cooler. 
wonder if you got that question right. Question number two, I asked you, which vitamin do guinea pigs need in their diet? Well, that would be vitamin C. So you need to make sure you add lots of lovely leafy greens like kale, spinach and broccoli. Now, why do you need to do that? Well, just like humans, guinea pigs can't make their own vitamin C, which is quite an unusual thing for many animals. So that's why you need to provide all those lovely leafy greens. Now, again, talking about the hot weather, like we did with the tiger, saying about how they swept through their feet. Look at these guinea pigs out in the sunshine. Now, guinea pigs can actually suffer with something called heat stroke, and this can make them feel very ill. It can cause them to become quite confused and to drool and to pant. So what do you need to do as a good guinea pig owner? Well, you need to keep their home in a nice shaded area so it's not in the direct sunlight. And when you feed those leafy greens like kale and spinach, it can be a great idea to soak them in icy cold water before feeding, making them extra cool to help cool them down. Plus, cucumber can be a great source of water to our guinea pigs. We don't want to feed too much because we don't want to upset their tummy, but a little bit each day can actually provide them with lots more water to help them keep cool during the summer months. I showed you a picture, this picture, and asked you who it came from. This was for question number three. Well, this is a horse. Beautiful animal. Here he is, full gallop looking very happy there. Now, horses can gallop at high speeds, but did you know they do all of their standing and running on one single toe? And it's a bit like us balancing on the third digit of our hand, so our third finger. So this finger, it's like us putting all our weight on the one finger, and that's what supports their whole body weight. A long time ago, they used to have five toes in those hooves, but now they only have one. It's a pretty, pretty amazing fact for our horses. Now, I asked you for question number four. I brought up this lovely animal, the cow. If it was true or false, if they have four stomachs, and it is indeed true. Now, this is because cows don't often chew a lot of their food very well. So they need all these chambers, all these extra stomachs to help break down that not very well chewed up digestive foods. So it helps to move it all through their digestive tract. Now, these cows here are called Holstein cows. These lovely guys here. And you know how people have fingerprints. So if I made a mark of my fingerprint, it would be like no other human fingerprint. Well, Holstein cows have spots on their body and no two cows are ever the same. It's like their fingerprint. So they're completely, completely um, unique from one another. That's a pretty cool fact about cows. Now I showed you a picture of a foot for question five. Here it is again. And this foot belongs to our lovely tortoise. This tortoise has got a bit long, longer nails than the other picture, but those feet belong to a tortoise. Now, a group of, of tortoises, here we've got them here, is actually called a creep. They can live for a really long time. So if you have a tortoise, you're probably going to have them around for a really long time. And the oldest tortoise ever recorded was 344 years old. That is really old. Now, question number six, I asked you if the Newfoundland or the Dachshund would be the best swimmers. And the answer is, here he is, the Newfoundland. They're actually excellent swimmers. And dogs with very short legs, like a Dachshund, often don't make very good swimmers because they're not that good at floating. So many of them don't like the water or aren't particularly great at swimming. You get the odd ones that are. But in general, these big guys in Newfoundland are excellent swimmers and are actually sometimes used to rescue people that get in danger in water. Now, one reason that Newfoundlands are extremely good at swimming is that they have webbed feet. Now, many dogs have webbed feet, so pretty much most of them will have some sort of skin in between their toes, like you can see in this picture. And that means that they have webbed feet. 
But Newfoundlands have a lot of skin between their toes, making their feet really well webbed, making them excellent swimmers. The next question I asked you about our handsome bear, the polar bear, and what colour is his skin? Well, you can just about see here in this picture because he's wet, but their skin is black. So although their fur looks very white, their skin is black. Now, polar bears, we always think of as being white. Look at this lovely baby polar bear. He looks nice and white. But actually, something that's very interesting is that a polar bear's fur is actually see-through. So when we get little different types of light coming in, they can look a different colour. So this polar bear here looks yellow and sometimes they can look grey and even green in colour, especially if they eat a certain diet and they're in a specific environment. But we think of our polar bears as being white, but sometimes they can be different colours. So that's quite interesting to know that about the polar bear. Now, for question eight, I asked you, to tell me whether each of these animals were born with their eyes open or closed. So we started off with these lovely foals. Foals are born with their eyes open. They're pretty quick to get up off their feet after being born. And they're often galloping around the field within 24 hours. They're, they're pretty, pretty good at doing that. And then I moved on to our kittens or kit, but not kittens in the cat sense. We're talking about baby bunnies and baby bunnies known as kits are born with their eyes closed. We then had a look at these lovely piglets. Look at them there having a nice snooze, but they're actually born with their eyes open. And we finished off with the lovely puppies in this picture here. And puppies are born with their eyes closed. Now I'm showing you a picture here of puppies that have just been born and you can see that their eyes are closed. So why are animals born with eyes closed? Well actually that's because their eyes aren't properly developed yet so although they've been born the eyes aren't ready to see the world and have light coming through so the eyelids protect them. So they stay closed and will open often within a few days to a week or two when those eyes are ready to finally see the world, what an exciting thing that is, both for your pet, for your animals, but also for you. It's pretty great when that happens. Then I asked you something else. I said out of those four animals, if this was for question nine, which of them have three eyelids? Do you think a horse has three eyelids? He does. Do you think a rabbit has three eyelids? They do. Do you think the pig has three eyelids? No, only two, like us humans do. So that must mean one thing, and that is dogs have three eyelids. I'm going to show you what that eyelid looks like. You can see this dog's eye. Can you see that bit in the corner there that looks a bit pink with a black edge? That is the third eyelid. And it's such a great thing because it helps to protect their eye. So if they get anything in their eye or they get a scratch, sometimes that third eyelid comes across to protect it. So if you ever see the third eyelid coming across in one of your pets, it might mean that they've got a sore eye. So you must let someone know because it might need some help from a vet. Now talking about eyes, look at these guys, these lovely goats. I just wanted to tell you that did you know that goats have 330 degree vision? So that means they can see all around them and the only bit they can't see is directly at the back of them. And the reason for that is so that they can see any predators approaching. So instead of having to turn their heads like we have to do, they can see just by keeping their head nice and still. That's pretty amazing, I think. Finally, we had question number 10. And I was asking you what type of fish this was found in... Finding Nemo's film, like a Disney film, what type of fish this was. And these are clownfish. I wonder if you got that one. That was quite tricky. Now, I've got a cool fact about clownfish. Well, two, actually. First, they can live up to 10 years old, which is quite a good age for a fish, especially because they're not that big. And the other thing is, is that 
if a clownfish is born male and they live in a big group of fish and the dominant or the boss female dies in the group, that male clownfish can turn itself into a female and lead the group. How super cool is that? They can't turn back into a male fish again. They can only stay as female at that point, but they can actually change, which I thought was a pretty wonderful fact. I wonder how you got on with today's quiz and if you enjoyed it, because there'll be another one coming soon. So I hope that you did really well. If you want to message me any of your scores or ask me any other questions, then please do. And I will see you very soon for the next Sophie's Vet School. Bye everyone, have a great day, lots of love. See you soon.